this is actually not one nation one election make it very clear it is not that no elections will be held in the next 5 years mm. elections may still happen in the next 5 years you have to be an extremely rational agent to strongly believe yeah. i want this uh, party in the lok sabha but this one in the vidhan sabha and cast two different votes nda alone cannot pass the bill in the lok sabha uh, it would require opposition parties to be on board Hello and welcome to the Indian Express. I'm Charulata Biswas and you're watching Explained on the Indian Express's YouTube channel. Today I'm being joined by Vikas Pathak, my colleague, who will be taking me through the details of a uh, one nation one election proposal and what the Ramnath Kovan committee has actually proposed, what the government stand is, why the opposition is um has rejected this proposal. and uh, the logistics and the cost around it you know there are several other things uh, aspects to one nation one election so i will try to get all of that detail through um, this conversation so vikas uh, we got the cabinet's approval uh, on the ramnath kovind proposal um, the report on one nation one election uh, tell me how what is the next step and how is it going to get cleared in the parliament will modi have enough support in the parliament so basically you know what it requires is uh, uh they require constitutional amendments for that mm -hmm. for the scheme to uh, come into operation the reason is that if they follow the template of the ramnath kovind committee earlier the question was before the committee was set up what if a government loses majority right so if a government loses majority and no government can be formed then you'll have to go in for fresh elections that is how the cycle of simultaneous elections was disrupted in the first place because 1967 onwards government started falling state mm -hmm. governments and the 1972 election was advanced to 1971 the one that was supposed okay. to happen in 72 mm -hmm. because of that the entire cycle got disrupted and even mm -hmm. afterwards state governments or central governments have fallen have not maybe completed 5 years so the question was that the cycle has been disrupted because governments lost their majority in the lower house mm. uh, be it the state assembly or be it uh, the lok sabha so now if you have to have simultaneous elections how do you get around this question mm. of what if a government loses majority because a government to be in place has to be accountable to parliament and should have a simple majority 50% plus 1 mm. without that the government does not have the majority to be able to make laws or whatever mm. that is the basic principle of democracy so what the ramnath kovind committee has suggested is that if supposing there is an election so uh, their scheme is this that at the beginning of a lok sabha whenever the government decides now it is time to uh, move towards uh, you know uh, uh, one nation one election so in the uh, during the first sitting of a particular lok sabha the president of india would notify a date mm. that this lok sabha would continue till this date mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, its term cannot go above that and what they'll do is that if any state elections are happening in between those 5 years mm -hmm. then the term of that particular assembly will expire on the date the term of the lok sabha expires right okay so okay. in that way they will bring all the uh, elections together Mm -hmm. that is the first step lok sabha mm -hmm. and vidhan sabha vidhan sabha elections mm -hmm. and now um, you can have simultaneous elections one time now the next question was what if a government falls in a state or at the center mm -hmm. then the kovind committee says that fresh elections will be held in that particular state or at the central level in okay. case no party or alliance can form a form a government but the term of that particular government will not be 5 years mm -hmm. that will be again till the oh, next okay. date of the lok sabha okay. which okay. means simply put that supposing there's a government in if they decide to uh, implement it from 2029 mm. supposing there's a government at the center that is formed in 2029 that mm. loses majority in 2031 or 31 or 31 huh. then uh, when a fresh government is formed even if it has a majority mm -hmm. it will not go from 31 to 36 it will end in 34 mm. which means the new government has got 3 years instead of 5 yeah uh, similarly with any state government if mm. a state government falls mm. uh, fresh elections are held uh, a new government comes in place 
even if it has a majority mm. the new government's term will end with the last date of that lok sabha right okay. Okay. supposing it falls twice mm. two elections mm. but that the third uh, one will have a very truncated one year term one and a half year term whatever yeah. so this is the scheme mm. so in this scheme what they've done is that they first need constitutional amendments that is what the committee also said mm. because the indian constitution clearly lays down the term of the lok sabha and of state assemblies as 5 years each right those are right. two particular articles in the indian constitution mm. one dealing with the lok sabha the other with the vidhan sabha so those articles will have to be amended mm. okay. to to kind of you know uh, do away with that 5 year necessary 5 year mm. term for Mm. any elected state government mm. or central government unless it loses the majority mm. till now the scheme is in case you don't lose the majority 5 years in case you lose the majority fresh elections and then 5 years five from there right okay. but so now it will be 5 years is the window mm. within which whichever government center or state falls mm. and fresh elections have to be ordered mm. then the term of that particular government mm. is still the Right. The, the particular date that has right. been notified for the Lok Sabha. Right. So it is all aligned around the Lok Sabha. That is mm -hmm. the first step, and the second would be 100 days after that they will align the local bodies elections mm -hmm. along with that. Panchayat elections. Yeah, yeah. Panchayat okay. uh, urban local bodies. Okay. The problem here is that this is actually not one nation one election, mm. because if you actually see, mm. there might be across the country 10 elections in that five years, mm. right? Because if a government loses majority supposing four state governments lose majority between if they start in 2029 between 29 and 34 mm. you don't have one election in india in 29 and one in 34 you have one in 29 four between 29 and 34 and yeah. then another in 34 yeah. right yeah. so first of all let's make it very clear it is not that no elections will be held in the next 5 years mm. elections may still happen in the next 5 years so mm. i think one it is a bit of a misnomer mm -hmm. secondly what can be the possible change so if state but isn't it like a mammoth exercise you know look at the number of states people going out for voting and uh, the kind of the logistics that we are uh, talking about and the money that will go in it uh, so in one of our reports damini nath has written that uh, eci has submitted a report where to uh, the covin committee saying that 8000 crore rupees will be allocated only for evms and vv pats so this is like a really like a definitely a social and political uh, experiment that probably will be yeah, happening but, but but i think if you balance it out the the expense over 5 years may not uh, get altered much mm -hmm. uh, the reason for that is one okay you'll uh, you'll need maybe one machine each more mm -hmm. because the same voter who's going out to vote Mm -hmm. uh it's like university elections if you have seen them mm -hmm. there's a central panel and there's a school panel okay so you cast one vote here one vote there okay right okay. or you go even go to the press club election mm -hmm. the central committee and whatever executive committee okay. so there are two votes mm -hmm. so the same person will go cast a vote for the lok sabha cast a vote for the vidhan sabha right so that expense of extra machines mm -hmm. will certainly be there the number right. of ma machines in each booth will double mm -hmm. that is there so far as security forces are concerned mm. not much of a problem because the same security guards are mm. guarding the booths the mm. one person comes casts two votes mm. that apart of course the the expense that is permitted to uh, an mla candidate and to an mp candidate both will come together mm. that will happen mm -hmm. but those are party expenses by and large right, right. so uh, that is still doable the only uh, issue is that it may actually not lead to the government's logic now the gov government's logic clearly is this that one we have elections all through the year or every two years or whatever so governments cannot mm -hmm. focus fully on governance mm -hmm. they get into election mode that's what modi yeah, prime minister modi yeah, that will be curtailed yeah, yeah. secondly many a time a migrant worker has to go twice or maybe thrice mm. if elections happen uh, in the state because lok sabha and vidhan sabha happen differently same person can go once, once and cast and, two votes yeah. so uh, this is the logic of the government but then again this is not what this guarantees because supposing there is a mi migrant laborer from bihar working in maharashtra mm. uh, lok sabha vidhan sabha both happen simultaneously mm. governments are formed the bihar government collapses next year mm. so again he has to go and back and cast his vote <laughs> all that it can happen is that it can disincentivize the opposition to uh, move a no confidence motion against a government mm. 
after maybe two and a half or three years. Hmm. Because generally, when, when uh, opposition moves a no confidence motion, the idea is to topple the government, right. then come to power after fresh, fresh, fresh elections. Supposing there's an election in 2029, the government becomes very unpopular in 2033 hmm. or 2032. Hmm. So who will put their minds together to ensure they have enough MLAs or MPs to topple the government? Because even if fresh elections are held, the person comes to power as chief minister only if at all they win only for one and a half years or two years. Mm. So that will also be a, a major issue that uh, the accountability of the government vis-a-vis -vis the opposition will reduce as the term progresses. Mm. So that is also one of the criticisms about it. That yeah. uh, Right, that, that is one. Uh, it's a question of is the government trying to be uh, very powerful? Because, you know, the, the, the incentive mm. for a fresh election and becoming chief minister is no one would want to become CM for one year or one yeah, and a half years, yeah, right? Yeah, they, yeah, they would rather yeah. say, let's wait. Yeah. Right. And uh, second, of course, is a, a very uh, valid concern that uh, has been talked about in much theoretical literature on this question also, that if elections are simultaneous, sometimes the national quote-unquote concern mm -hmm. may cloud the local concern mm. and the regional exactly. concern. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what yeah. happens is that there might be two different priorities. Mm. So for a particular citizen, there might be a national issue at the, that right. same point of time, right. where, which they, they feel very strongly about. Mm. At the same time, there are local issues, like Correct. the local MLA not working well, yeah. or yeah. 100 days after that, local body issue, drains not being mm. cleaned. So if you combine the three, mm. the dom one dominant narrative may actually you know, cloud mm. out the other narratives. Mm. So that is one criticism that... The decision-making process will become cloudy yeah. and... Because you, you have might to be an end extremely, up extremely, voting for someone else. Yeah, you might, you have to be an extremely rational agent to strongly believe, yeah. I want this uh, party <laughs> in the Lok Sabha, but this one in the Vidhan Sabha and cast two different votes, yeah. which is possible. Yeah. Uh, but still, the possibilities of one issue becoming overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Because the whole idea of our federal structure basically is that why don't we have a unitary system? Yeah. We don't have a unitary system uh, while... You know, we have a quasi-federal system where the union has been given more powers by the constitution compared to the states. But we still have a federal structure because it is believed that India being a very diverse country, uh, there are concerns as uh, which are central concerns and vis-a-vis -vis those issues like say defense, foreign affairs, which are central issues. Mm. They might also be very specific uh, mm. concerns like say law and order in a particular state. Mm. Right, which might also be a, a cause of great concern. Yes. So, uh, if two elections are held differently, hmm. then it's very much possible that one casts the, the vote in the Lok Sabha for a different set of issues and in the Vidhan Sabha for a different set of issues and for a third set of issues in the local bodies. So that is one criticism of it. Okay. But let me be very clear, there's no guarantee it will lead to uh, one election every five years. Hmm. There might still be several <laughs> elections. Several elections. Um, so, like you said, you know, the no confidence motion that the opposition could bring and to topple the government, right? But the opposition is absolutely like there's a backlash uh, that the government is facing. Um, how do you think that Modi, Narendra Modi is going to get the numbers in the parliament? And uh, can you take us through the numbers and explain yeah. to our viewers um, if the yeah. proposal will be cleared in the parliament. So, well, all those things like the president announcing a, 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 a notifying an appointed date that the term of this Lok Sabha is, is five years from this date and all the elections being aligned within that five years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, even if that means uh, assemblies that are uh, not five years in their term, maybe two years, three years, whatever, mm -hmm. all that comes into play only mm -hmm. when you are successfully able to uh, amend the constitution to change mm -hmm. what the constitution sets sets mm -hmm. as the term of a Lok Sabha mm -hmm. and the Vidhan Sabhas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that change has to be done. Mm -hmm. Now, as per Article 368 of the constitution, which which uh, permits uh, Parliament to amend the constitution, the constitution of India can be amended by a special majority in both houses of Parliament. Okay. So while ordinary bills can be uh, you know uh, passed by a simple majority, 50% mm -hmm. plus one. Mm -hmm. presented voting. Mm -hmm. In the case of a, constitu a constitutional amendment, there is an additional condition. The additional condition is that, supposing like 543 members in the Lok Sabha. So it says that the number of votes cast in favor of the amendment should not be less than one half of the total strength of the house. Okay. So whatever the number of members in attendance that day, 
if it is below 272, the amendment falls. Okay. Then the second condition that has to be simultaneously met, that among the number of members present and voting, at least two thirds have to support the amendment. Mm. Right. So these two conditions have to be met together. Mm. So uh, which means if 543, maybe 500 members are present that day, yeah. then two thirds of the 500 present and voting should vote in favor of that amendment. Mm. If just 400 are present or 350 are present, if the number voting for the amendment is two thirds of those present and voting, but that is lower than half mm. of the total strength of the house, then also then it falls. Also it right. Falls, yeah. So yeah. if we go to the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, uh, right now 543 in the Lok Sabha, the NDA has 293. Mm. This is all the allies, uh, BJP and allies. The India bloc, which is the opposition, has 240 mm. right now. Mm. And the two-thirds majority mark is 362. Mm. If all members of the Lok Sabha are present and voting, then you need 362 to pass a constitutional amendment. Right now, the NDA has 293. Mm. Right. Even if uh, all are not present and voting, there has to be large absence and abstention. Yes. Now, the problem is the bigger parties in the opposition are Congress, Samajwadi Party, TMC, DMK they are going to oppose it anyway. There is right. no way you can expect them to support it. Right. So which basically means NDA alone cannot pass the bill in the Lok Sabha. Uh, it would require opposition parties to be on board. That is one. You come to the Rajya Sabha. Mm -hmm. Right now it has got 234 seats. Its maximum strength is 250 as mm -hmm. per the constitution. Mm -hmm. Now uh, NDA has 121. India bloc has 85. Mm -hmm. The two-thirds majority is 164. So again in the Rajya Sabha, NDA on its own cannot get it passed unless there are several abstentions. Mm. Now abstentions often happen when there is a good working relationship between a party in government and a party that is not supporting the government. For example, mm. uh, many a time in the last uh, Modi government it used to happen that uh, indirectly say the BJD would support the BJP on key legislations, either support or walk out. There are two mm, ways. If right. you walk out, the, the strength of the house goes down. Therefore, the mm. number required also goes down. Mm. Right. So those are the ways. But here, the bigger parties in the opposition are all anti-BJP at the moment. So to bring them on board is a brave, big challenge. Yes. And uh, that is why passage of the constitutional amendment would be extremely difficult given the numbers. Yeah. Maybe they introduce a bill and uh, the opposition says send it to a standing committee or select committee of parliament and they refer it just like the Vox board bill. Mm -hmm. But then it will go on the back burner. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it easily passing and without its passage. Absolutely. You cannot have one nation. Tough nut to yeah. crack. But yes, yes, exactly. Uh, so what next now? Because uh, I think uh, the session will be next held in the month of? Hey, we have, we'll have the winter session now. Winter December. session, yeah, yeah, December. So that's when the real action will take place, That is right? if they choose. They have not given themselves a date yet. Okay. If okay. they choose to bring a constitutional amendment bill, introduce it in the coming session, mm -hmm. then of course, if they vote on it, mm. it might fall. Mm. The other way is to kind of uh, refer it to a committee of parliament, standing committee or select committee, which is a microcosm of uh, the mm -hmm. parliament. It is a smaller committee, maybe 20 to 30 members, 20 from Lok Sabha, 10 from Rajya Sabha, mm -hmm. uh, where the representation of parties is as mm -hmm. far as possible uh, mm -hmm. in, in proportion to their representation in parliament, mm -hmm. right? So that may give them some time where the government might try to convince the opposition parties, look, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong in it, mm -hmm. it all works. The problem is even if some opposition parties believe there is really nothing wrong in it. Yeah, then also uh, right now, ever since the uh, last Lok Sabha election, mm. we have seen that terms between the government and opposition have literally plummeted. Yes. The level of sarcasm being used by from the opposition uh, for the prime minister and for the, from the prime minister and the yeah. members of uh, uh, the, the treasury benches towards say Rahul Gandhi, mm. that is really something that, that uh, shows that they don't want to do business with one another. Also the opposition repeatedly mm. attacking the speaker mm. and the chairman. Also the U-turns, recent U-turns. Um, yeah, precisely because. On Vakv bill yeah, and then the, the lateral if, entry. Yeah. If yeah. you can't get it passed easily yeah. Yeah. or sometimes, you know, uh, passage might be difficult in both houses You don't, and you're not even sure about your allies, mm. 100%. Yeah. In that case, you have to buy time by sending it to a, a committee. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, how uh, things are unless the relations between say Narendra Modi, Rahul Gandhi, Mamata Banerjee, mm. MK Stalin, 
become more uh, you know convivial uh, it is very difficult yeah. to, to have those kind of numbers so if they choose to bring it in this uh, winter session they may have to uh, refer it to a committee so that they buy time or they may choose to bring it later mm. right so we okay. don't know they have not uh, said very clearly when they want mm. to bring the bill it's mm. also possible that they are just they are just saying it because what all they have said before the elections they are mm. trying to show that look 240 and 303 is no difference we are people of purpose mm. we decide once we have decided we have to do this we'll go ahead with it interesting right that yes. could be one yes. one way of yes. just showing that nothing has changed yeah. Yeah. but passage is another question mm. passage of uh, a constitutional amendment mm. bill is quite mm. another question yeah to show the consistency and the yeah. continuity, continuity yes. of the government right Okay, thank you so much Vikas for giving us all the details and thank you viewers for joining us. If you like this video, then don't forget to share and subscribe to our channel, The Indian Express. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you.